I hope the neighbors are okay. <laughs> they definitely got purified. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, if I can have your attention again, we'll read a little bit from Srimad Bhagavatam. Srinardu Vacha Evam Suradaya Sarvi Pramaruta Purasara Nupaiti Matsyan Manyu Samrandam Sudura Sadam. The great sayings, Narada Muni continued, the demigods headed by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and other great demigods they had not come forward before the Lord, who at that time was extremely angry. Maybe the kids can be a little more quiet or go next door to the other room. Saksat Sri Prisitala Devi Dristata Mahalat Bhutam Adrista Sutta Purvat Bhut Sano Priyaya Sankitala the goddess of fortune, Lakshmiji, was requested to go before the Lord by all the demigods present, who because of fear could not do so. But even she had never seen such a wonderful and extraordinary form of the Lord, and thus she could not approach him. Praradam presiyam masa brahmavastitam antiki katapasama yopehi svapitre kupitam pravam Therefore, Lord Brahma requested Pallad Maharaj, who was standing very near him, My dear son, Lord Dasringadev is extremely angry at your demoniac father. Please go forward and appease the Lord. Tati Tisanate Rajan Mahabhagavatur Bhakta Upe Chabuvi Kai Nena Na Nama Viditan Jari. Usually we take them to the other side, you know. Otherwise it's getting very hard to they win if they stay here. <laughs> Not <at all. laughs> you, you know very well. At home you also experience these things, isn't it? You know who wins, you know, in the end. Shoot, it's powerful. Narada Muni continued, O King, although the exalted devotee Pallad Maharaj was only a little boy. He accepted Lord Brahma's words. He gradually proceeded to Lord Nisringadev and fell down to offer his respectful obeisance and folded him. Swapad Muri Patitam Tama Arvakam Vidokya Deva Kripaya Paripita Utapya Tasishni Adadat Karam Mujam Kalahe Vitrista Diyam Krita Bayam. When Lord Nisringadev saw the small boy Pallad, Maharaj prostrated at the soles of his lotus feet. He became most ecstatic in affection towards his devotee. Raising Pallad, the Lord placed his lotus hand upon the boy's head because <coughs> his hand is always ready to create fearlessness in all of his devotees. By the touch of Lord Nishimadev's hand to Pallad Maharaj's head, Pallad was completely freed from all material contaminations and desires, as if he had been thoroughly cleansed. Therefore he at once became transcendently situated, and all the symptoms of ecstasy became manifest in his body. His heart filled with love and his eyes with tears, and thus he was able to completely capture the lotus feet of the Lord within the core of his heart. Astoshi darim eka gra manasa susamanita prema katgadi avacha tanyastri dikshaha 
But I have not fixed his mind and sight upon the work of Srinadev with full attention, in complete trance, with a fixed mind, he began to offer prayers in love with a faltering voice. So then Prahlad Maharaj began to offer prayers. Naivatmana Prabhu Rayam Nijala Bapurno Manam Janat Avijusa Karno Vrinite Yajja Jano Bhagavate Viraditta Manam Tats Chatmane Prati Mukhasya Jata Mukhasya The Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always fully satisfied in Himself. Therefore, when something is offered to Him, the offering by the Lord's mercy is for the benefit of the devotee. For the Lord does not need service from anyone to give an example. If one's face is decorated, the reflection of one's face in a mirror is also seen to be decorated. So this is a very famous verse. Uh, the verse where we are reading how when the face is decorated, then automatically the reflection of the face is also decorated. Oh, that's clear. We put tilak and we look in the mirror and we also see tilak in this way. The reflection is also decorated. So it is said, by decorating the Lord, who is the origin, we, the reflections of the Lord, also become decorated. And that is really the essence. Uh, somehow or other it is the nature of devotional service. We are serving the Lord and while we are making all the arrangements for His comfort, we are getting the benefit actually. Um, that is the situation. One might think, I'd better keep this for myself. Mm -hmm. I struggled hard to get it and it's good. And now I've got it. Let's keep it for myself. No, no. But it's the best. It's the best you could possibly get. Let's keep it for myself. No, no. Now, offer it to the Lord. Really, the best. To Him, yes. And as we do so, we actually get the benefit. So this is a very deep point here made by the Lord. And if we would only believe it, uh, if we would only believe it, if we could only do it, not so easy, not so easy to actually do it. We hear it, we may know the verse, but can we actually do it, give the best to the Lord? Or best we keep it? Uh, there is the story of a father who offered his son to, to an ashram. Uh, and the son's name was Padmalocha, which means lotus eyed, and he was blind. Yes, many times. Uh, many times when I was in India in charge of the ashram, someone would come and say, Oh, yes, I want my son in, to stay in the ashram. Usually it was a real trouble case, otherwise, who would come? Eh? Who would come and say, I want my son to stay in the ashram? Then you knew something was loose, you know, something, <laughs> some, some screws missing or something was not, something had to be wrong, you know. Very suspicious. Uh, why? Why you want your son suddenly to stay in the ashram? No, no, I think he should be a sadhu. That's good. So, you take it. Yeah. So, yes, generally we don't give the best. Um, we don't. We give something. Yeah. Something. Not the biggest notes. Some smaller <laughs> notes. Oh. But we give like that. What can we do? It is difficult. But the more we give to Krishna, the more we gain. Uh, that is the point. That is really how it is. Uh, so Pilates is making this point. Sri Prabhupada writes, In Bhakti Yoga it is recommended that the devotee follow nine principles. Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Svaranam, Pala, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. Srimad Bhagavatam 7.5.23 
The service of glorifying the Lord by hearing, chanting and so on is not, of course, meant for the benefit of the Lord. This devotional service is recommended for the benefit of the devotee. <coughs> the Lord is always glorious, whether the devotee glorifies him or not. But if the devotee engages in glorifying the Lord, the devotee himself automatically becomes glorious. <coughs> By glorifying the Lord constantly, the living entity becomes purified in the core of his heart, and thus he can understand that he does not belong to the material world, but is a spirit soul whose actual activity is to advance in Krishna consciousness, so that he may become free from the material clutches. Thus the blazing fire of material existence is immediately extinguished, Baba Maha Davakni Nirvapanam. A foolish person is amazed that Krishna orders Sarvadagnam Parityamam Kam Saranam Raja, Bhagavad Gita 1866, abandon all varieties of religious activities and just surrender unto me. Some foolish scholars even say that this is too much to demand. But this demand is not for the benefit of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Rather, it is for the benefit of human society. If human beings individually and collectively surrender everything to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in full Krishna consciousness, all of human society will benefit. One who does not dedicate everything to the Supreme Lord is described in this verse as Avidusha, a rascal. In Bhagavad Gita 7.15, the Lord Himself speaks in the same way. Nanda namam duskritina muda rapadinte naradama maya parita jnana asuram bhavama sitaha Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, the lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me, because of ignorance and misfortune. The atheists and the naradamas, the lowest of men, do not surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, although the Supreme Lord Krishna is full in Himself, He appears in different yugas to demand the surrender of the conditioned souls, so that they will benefit by becoming free from the material clutches. In conclusion, the more we engage in Krishna consciousness and render service unto the Lord, the more we benefit. Krishna does not need service from any of us. Krishna is always satisfied within himself. Krishna has everything that he requires. Um, Krishna doesn't need, Srila Prabhupada explains, doesn't need to be glorified. Um, with chanting the holy name, Krishna doesn't need it. It's not that Krishna is sitting there, oh, how nice, ah, oh, ah, oh, they're chanting my name, I enjoy it so much, ah, oh, yes, how nice. Oh, imagine you all chant Kadamba Kanana Swami, oh, Kadamba Kanana Swami, then after some time I go, little more please, oh, yes, yes, yes. He said, oh, Kadamba Kana Swami is so nice. He said, yes, yes, yes. He is so nice. He is so great. He is so wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. What did you say? <laughs> so is Krishna like that? Uh, then why are we chanting? We're all this chanting, all this glorification of Krishna. Why? Is it that he enjoys being glorified? Uh, like we enjoy it. Come on, yes, and I say, you are the best. Ah, yes, no, definitely, ah, yes, yes, the very best, ah, yes, number one, no, one, 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 number one. Very intelligent, oh, yes, highly qualified, feels nice. <laughs> Little more? Why not? <laughs> Yes, this is the nature of anyone in this world. Um, we become vain. So is that vanity, that pride, is it there? 
in Krishna. Now, Krishna does take pleasure when we chant his name. But the reason why Krishna takes pleasure when we chant his name is that Krishna sees now they are getting the mercy. How nice. That is what Krishna is seeing. Now they are getting the mercy. How wonderful. They're chanting my name. They're getting the mercy. They're getting the benefit. They're getting purified. Krishna is enjoying that to see that we are getting uplifted. Now their love for me will increase. They're chanting. Yes. Oh. After all, we can love many things. Right? I can love iPad. You know, oh yes. He can love phone. He can love Sony camera. And so many other cameras. Right? We can love so many things. But ultimately, oh, ultimately, whatever we love, Nothing compares to loving Krishna. Remember the residents of Vrindavan. Remember Lord Brahma came and he was going to show that boy because everyone was glorifying Krishna. Too much actually. Yeah, really. I mean, consider this. The boy did something extraordinary. Not really. He lifted a hill. It was something. You know, I mean, not anybody can lift a hill, right? So, you know, they were glorifying him. But let's put it in perspective. I, Brahma, keep the universe, keep the entire planetary systems in their positions in the universe. You realize that? I mean, think about it. Hill and planets, you know? I mean, you got it, you know? I mean, I'm putting the planets in the, in the boy lifted the hill. So, you know, these residents of Vrindavan, they got a bit confused, I guess. Well, let me show that. And so he kidnapped all the calves and cowherd boys and hid them in a cave. Ha <laughs> ha, now, now let's see this boy who is so powerful and so, and so on with his mystic power. Now let's see how he's bewildered. Um, but when Brahma, having been away for a moment, returned, then the calves and cowherd boys were still there. He said, how is this? I just put him in a cave. He went back to the cave, the boys were there. He came back, and with Krishna, he still saw the boys there. He said, no, which are the real ones? The ones in the cave, or the ones here, the ones there? And he wasn't sure anymore. He said, like, you know. <coughs> then... All these boys with Krishna changed their form and took the form of Vishnu Murtis with four hands. At that time, Brahma could realize, oops, four hands, Chatur Buj, uh -huh. Narayan, 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 huh? everybody knows, Egdotin Cha, Oop, Egdotin Cha, Matlab, Narayan, 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 Pranams, Pranams. Yeah, so then Lord Brahma understood how he was dealing with. Yes. Uh, big mistake, of course, you know, to to do this. Um, blaspheme the supreme personality. So meanwhile, then Lord Brahma came to his senses and started to offer prayers and so on. Now, Lord Brahma operates on a different time than we do. In one day of Brahma, there are a thousand cycles of four yugas. So, a few minutes of Lord Brahma's time is a long time, was a whole year on planet Earth. So, actually, Krishna took the forms of the calves and coward boys for a whole year. And suddenly, suddenly, when when Krishna, when all these boys came home, their parents, they were mad, they loved them. Suddenly they loved their sons more than ever before. They never loved their children as much as now. Now that Krishna had taken that position. The cows, the same, they had already new calves, but these calves then were one year old, but they didn't care about the new calves at all, they just cared about those calves. 
And then the cows run out, run towards their cows. Because now Krishna had become the cows. Now Krishna had become the boys. So in this way, Krishna fulfilled the desire of the residents of Vrindavan, who had always been thinking, oh yes, we have nice children, but if only we would have had a son like Krishna. If only Krishna could have been our son. And Krishna fulfilled that desire. So that is a fact. Um, but ultimately, um, ultimately, Krishna is asamurdua. Asamurdua means there's nothing, nothing as great as Krishna. Nothing. No one. No one can, there's nothing that can compare to Krishna. Therefore, um, ultimately, we turn to Krishna. Um, then, it is said that water by nature is wet. Sugar by nature is? Good. Fire by nature is? Hot. Very good. And... And ginger tea also, by nature, <laughs> by nature is hot. Huh? And so, and then human beings by nature are? Uh, That's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, what? I'll give you the microphone because that was tough. That was a whole mouthful. Now you say it. Self's the title in gross. Okay. There it goes, eh? Is a subtle body, gross body, and all that. Okay. Human beings, by nature, are servant. You can't help it. See? It's like, you know, when you're at home, then your parents come and they want you to do something. Yeah. And you can say, go to the shop and go buy something. And they don't make you do that. Okay, they make you go to the kitchen and wash the dishes. And, uh, they make you clean your own room. Oh gosh. Oh, oh poor boy, are you okay? Such terrible things. Oh gosh, it's good. And make you so, it makes you really, it's tough, huh? Anyway, you, you have to do that. Because, whether you want it or not, because they're the boss. And they're gonna make, gonna tell you what to do, and then, no, I don't want to do it, but they will force you to do it. That's the nature, yes. So, in this way, you are a servant. You can't help it. You have to serve, whether you want or not. At the same time, you know, all these little kids, right? When they scream, then the parents have to serve. See, look, he's serving the child. But, oh yeah, he's also serving the child. Serves the baby, baby. Kuchi, kuchi, kuchi. <laughs> Daddy will sing you a song. <laughs> Hare Krishna, or uncle, I'm not sure. <laughs> not auntie. No. <laughs> anyway, so he has to serve the baby, right? And everyone has to serve somebody. And when you go in school, the teacher says, sit straight, <coughs> fold your arms, you know. Hold your arms, you know. And the teacher's not it. Uh, so they have all this, everyone has to serve. You cannot escape it. That is how it, because it's human beings by nature are servants. That is what, what happens. Uh, you can see, as soon as someone becomes president of a country, he has to serve the voters. He's always serving the voters. You know? Always saying the right thing to get the votes. He's a servant. That's to serve. Uh, everybody. When you, when you're the boss, you know, you have to work harder than everybody else. And it's like, it's it's easier to be at the bottom. Huh? They say that there are 
it's like a pyramid, you know. At the, bo at the bottom, you have all the rights and few duties. At the top, you have no rights and all the duties. Yeah? So, yes. so, somehow or another, everyone has to serve. Because it's our nature to serve. You get married, oh gosh, you have to serve. Uh, cook, uh, clean, bring money, all these things. You got married, you know, what did you get yourself into? Suddenly you have to serve. Right? That's the nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were alone, it was easy, you know, but now. Cooking, cooking, cooking. Where is it? You yeah. have to serve. And, and so on. When you come home, where's the money? Yeah, serve, serve, serve. So, this servant is natural. But who do you want to serve? Krishna. Why? He wants to serve Krishna, why? So what? Why you want to, because he's supreme controller, why you want to serve the supreme controller? Why not serve your friends? You serve him and he'll serve you back. Today you give him the pancakes and tomorrow he'll give you some ice cream. You don't like ice cream? What, what a strange kid you are. <laughs> You're the only kid on the whole planet who doesn't like ice cream. All my friends don't like ice cream. All your friends don't like ice cream? Gosh, what's wrong with you guys? I like ice cream. But I don't. Huh? Then what you like? <coughs> Rasagula? Uh, Rasamalai? Um, chocolate? Oh, awesome. okay. What? I don't like chocolate. What do you like? Something you have to like. Huh? He likes mango. Mom says mango. No, that was, your, your, she says your mom is over there and your mom says mango. Okay, now you can't now you can't cheat me anymore. You like something. He's trying to be smart. So you give him pancakes today and he gives you mango tomorrow. So why don't you serve him today? And that way you can get mangoes. Huh? I don't know. So why do you want to serve Krishna? Because he's our Supreme Father. He's your Supreme Father. And then? Why do you want to serve your Supreme Father? Back to God. Why? Why do you want to go back to God? To enjoy him. You want to enjoy the thing. You can also enjoy here. No peace of mind. No peace of mind. Not very peaceful. <laughs> Is it? Well, it's fun. <laughs> Why do you want to serve Krishna? Because he's Supreme Father. Because what? Supreme Father. Oh, you, that's she also said. Look yeah, at that. Same, same reason, amazing. So what? Why do you want to serve the Supreme Father? You don't want to serve your other father? <laughs> <laughs> What, your father in this world, you don't want to serve. I'll call him, huh? <laughs> Tell him that. He's what? our master. What? He's our master. He's our master. And we are, we are so many masters, eh? <laughs> your boss is also the master. School, school teacher is the master. The, you know, the government is the master. Police with cameras. <laughs> you know, don't touch your phone. They're master. Yeah. You want to touch your phone, but you're not allowed to. For Krishna's pleasure? Okay, for Krishna's pleasure. Why? Why for Krishna's pleasure? Why not for your own pleasure? It's like seeing your own father being happy. And then? If he's happy, you're happy. Yeah? Someone said, like, I heard a voice, but... Who will, who will be merciful? Who will be merciful? Ah, and what does that mean? 
pain away. <laughs> then he takes your brain away. Your pain. pain. <laughs> We want to come out from birth and death, eh? Because this is uh, This is not so good, huh? It's It's pleasure, but less pleasure, less pleasure and more and more visible, more I see. Little pleasure and lots of misery and lots of stuff. Mm. Mm. But the pleasure is so sweet, even if it's a little. <laughs> <laughs> no. After so much misery, little pleasure is not, is not uh, that sweet. If, if you go, go back to God, uh, there is no misery then. Uh, yeah. Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> have you been there? <laughs> huh? But how do you know that you can trust them? <laughs> yeah, but what if somebody just, you know, somebody just wrote these books? What if there is a book? Huh? Because we have a hope that it's eternal happiness. So it's hope, huh? It's about hope. hope yeah. We have lots of hope. We are part of the Krishna. Part of what? what, what? We are part of the Krishna. We want to serve the Krishna. Yes. That's our eternal position. How do you know? Krishna says. How do you know that he says that? Did you hear it? <laughs> Does he talk to you? Getting warm, getting warm. How do you know that? It's the prediction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who said that? So you are saying. Oh, I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> that must be true. <laughs> um, I see. Okay. Yes. Why do we believe what Prabhupada says? <coughs> yeah. Why? Because it's coming in the lineage. Because it's coming with? In the in the parampara. It's coming parampara. Okay, this is the succession parampara. Yeah. Why do we believe? Why do we? Why do we believe what Prophet says? Why? It's for our own benefit. Because for our benefit. Why do we believe what Prophet says? Why? Why do we, why do we believe him? Because whatever he said. By implementing these instructions, we are experiencing the pleasure. Ah. For example, chanting, chanting, we feel relaxed. By impl implement, implement. implementing, yeah. we get some experience, experience, good experience. By chanting, we feel relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking now with everybody. Huh? I'm testing your faith. I'm, I'm very bad tonight. I'm testing your faith. Like air is everywhere, yes. but when we feel hot, we need fans to feel the air. Yes. Similarly, in order to feel the God, temples, scriptures, other things, that gives us the feeling that the God is there and we should believe. The mm -hmm. words of the God in the, in the mm -hmm. scriptures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very poetic. You should write it down. Yes. Proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. Ah, now you're talking. <laughs> That's my language. Pudding, yes. What kind of pudding? <laughs> Any pudding. 
Okay. Anyway, it just sounds I hate sugar. good. Proof is in the pudding. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, he also agrees with the pudding. <laughs> you hate pudding also. Yes, he really. He's a difficult boy, eh? Gosh. If you have to cook for him, he doesn't like ice cream, he doesn't like pudding, but he likes mango. Yeah. Every day. Every day mango. She says. No, I haven't had it every day. Day before yesterday, I didn't have it. Day before yesterday, you didn't have it. So today you had. And yesterday you had. She can have mango every day. Every day. But that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna also said, when his mother said that he eaten clay, and then he said, no, it's not true. <laughs> so you have to open your mouth and we will see if there's some mango in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of mango. <laughs> Okay, so yes, obviously we see that Srila Prabhupada as the um, Acharya, as the pure devotee, is the living proof. Because not only his instructions make us happy, but he also shows symptoms of happiness huh, that others don't show. Such, sometimes Prabhupada is just beaming with happiness. You can still see the photos today. Okay. One time, in, Germ in the old days, they had cameras, they did not automatically adjust to the light. They had to be manually adjusted. Some of you may still remember, you know, the, 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 guy, the guys that dye their hair black, you know? Huh? They may still remember. Manually, you had to adjust the camera. You will know, I will know. Yeah. In our time, it was like that. So, they were taking pictures of Prabhupada and adjusting the hands and uh, and flashing all the time, every picture. So Prabhupada was just seeing light bulbs, you know, from all the flashing. So at one point Prabhupada said, no more. No more no more light bulbs, you know, enough of this. Right? <coughs> so then the photographer got a special film, a very slow film. And with slow film you did not need any uh, any flash. But it was on a tripod, and slow film is very sensitive. So the slightest movement, so it didn't touch it. He put a cord on the camera from a distance, wicking. But then he had to adjust the lens very carefully, because very sensitive. So he had a light meter. So he's measuring the light with a light meter. Good light meter, German, German light meter. Best. He had this light meter. Suddenly the light meter goes into maximum. See, looking, someone turned on the light. No, it was Prabhupada. He was beaming, beaming with happiness, literally. So much, so, so blissful, so transcendental. Prabhupada showed such happiness. Prabhupada always spoke about Krishna in any situation. Always remembering Krishna, never forgetting Krishna for a moment. Right? So, what... Whatever we see about Prabhupada, whatever we read about Prabhupada, whatever picture, we cannot find any fault. We can only see he was really a pure devotee. So if he says Bhagavatam is the main book, okay, we accept it. Mm -hmm. Then he says, and the proof you find here, okay, yes, then, oh. so in this way, Prabhupada is the shortcut. Yeah. He's the shortcut. Prabhupada said we didn't go to the moon. Okay, it must be that. Yeah. Must be true then. Yeah. So the pure devotee, he makes it all, he's the immediate proof. We can see the pure devotee is different. We can see the pure devotee is different than other people. And therefore, it, okay, he's the living proof. We need some living proof, then we have the scriptures. But the pure devotee is immediately there and gives us that faith. 
Of course, you can believe in scriptures because people for a thousand years have been believing in scriptures. But now there are a lot of people in India who don't believe in scriptures anymore. This mythology, they say. We meet them on the train. Huh? And now I don't travel so much by train anymore in India. Now everything is plain. But before, on the train, always. They say, oh, this mythology. This is not mythology. Mythology means some story. No, this is fact. Huh? So many have doubted the scriptures. We need living proof of the scripture. Then it's convincing. Yeah. Therefore, with the, the pure devotee is important. We need a pure devotee along with the scripture. Yeah. Then we believe it. And of course, tradition does give us faith. Yeah. My grandfather believed in this, my great-grandfather believed in this. Thousand years ago they believed in this, two thousand years ago they believed in this. Yes, yes. That helps. But still that faith is not your own. That's actually not your own faith. That's just by tradition. But your own faith you have to find also. That you have to find. So then you have to find a pure devotee. Because on the strength of tradition, we cannot become pure devotees. On the strength of tradition, we can do some prayer. On the strength of tradition, we can burn a lamp. On the strength of tradition, we can observe Dasera. On the strength of tradition, we can do many things. No? But on the strength of tradition, we can do the ritual. But pure devotion, no, that we cannot do on the strength of tradition. That we can only do on the strength of meeting a pure devotee. Uh, because there we get the faith that yes, this is the highest. Uh, like this morning I was speaking about some demigod puja and how in Bengal, they do many pujas and they like Vishwakarma puja. And in the course of Vishwakarma puja, one day a year, you worship your tools and also your bicycle. Right? So quickly do puja to the bicycle. So even sometimes our brahmacharis stay, but no one's watching. <laughs> so what was that? Nothing. <laughs> You are not doing this account. No, no. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Only Krishna, only Krishna. Like quickly to the bicycle. Uh, so like this. No. But the pure devotee, uh, he, a prophet served only Krishna with so much love that he was able to convince people from all around the world. See, I did not, this was not my tradition. In my family, they don't, they, men don't wear a dress. That's for sure, you know. A man in a skirt, like this, in my family. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. In my family, it's not like that. It's not our tradition. Then why would he do? Why would we do all this? Because Prabhupada showed all the symptoms of what he was teaching. Prabhupada was teaching from the Bhagavatam and then he showed it by his own behavior and his own qualities. Then he said, yes, now we can believe this Bhagavatam and now we can believe in him. And then, okay, we accept, we accept what he says. Then, all right, only Krishna. Then we serve only Krishna. And we offer the mangoes to Krishna. Then every day we will offer one mango to Krishna. <laughs> Can you do that from now on? If I get, if I get and what will you do after you offer it to Krishna? <laughs> then you give it to your best friend. 
No. You first you give the mango to Krishna, you offer it to Krishna, then it's prasadam. What do you do with the prasadam? No, stupid it. You get a good mango offered to Krishna, then you eat it. No, you distribute it. Then you get more mercy. He's not sure if he likes this. <laughs> this was not the best part of the lecture. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you alone. Think about it. Anyway, so that's what we see um, in the pure devotee that they just offer everything to Krishna. And that was Prabhupada. Huh? Prabhupada made the biggest sacrifice, bigger than anybody else. And it wasn't easy. He was old. In all days, he did all these things. When other people retired, he started and worked so hard. In the night translating, when other people slept, in the day, meeting people one after the other, it's very tiring meeting people. Everyone leaves something with you. Yeah? I mean, they come and they leave something in your room. Some problem. Swamiji, we have this problem and they leave it in your room. But I know. Um, and Prabhupada just absorbed it all and just gave everyone Krishna. Pure devotion. So therefore, we have to read the Prabhupada Lila Amrita. Have you read Prabhupada Lila Amrita? Oh yeah, I have with my dad. With my dad, yeah, I have. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Because the big one is big. You have to read the whole thing. You give me some time. I'll come back next year. I read, I read a little bit of volume two. Okay. I have to all seven volumes as I read them all. From beginning to end. I'll give you some time. But I'll check on you. Next time, can you talk to him? Maybe. He likes the cake. But you're sitting right opposite of me, so. You're <laughs> <laughs> getting scared of me now. It's okay, I'll give you mango sometimes. <laughs> now that I know you like mangoes, whenever I get a mango, I'll keep it for you. <laughs> All right. So, I thank you for this. You know, we need the pure devotee <clears throat> to really give us deep faith. See? Otherwise, we may do many things on tradition, but because of the pure devotee, we can go deep. And that is the strength of this movement. Srila Prabhupada, first of all, and then whatever devotees he created. And we see that Prabhupada created so many devotees who are very dedicated. Then our faith becomes strong. But we need that living devotee who to really give us full faith. Otherwise, faith will never be complete. Okay, that was what I had to tell you tonight. I'm now thinking of Mongolarty tomorrow morning. So, a little bit of a drive and then we'll go home. But if there is a question, I will still answer. Because I left a few minutes for some questions. Can we get his faith by reading his books? And then we read his books, and then we have to put his books into practice. Because these books, they are giving us practical guidelines of how to live. It's not just interesting knowledge, but you have to live by it. And then, yes, if you live by it, you become beautiful. And we get it from Chani Hare Krishna.
and we get it from making a sacrifice for him, serving, serving him in all respects, whatever is needed. To have no other interest than Prabhupada's interest. Mm, other question? Yes. But in the same verse, 929, he says that he has a special inclination to his devotions. How yes. do you understand this impartial view? Well, we are also say that we would be impartial. Um, we would be the well-wisher of everyone. But still, you have a special connection with your children because you take care of them. So, Krishna gives everyone the chance to come close to him. He's impartial. Everyone has a chance to become his devotee. He's not saying, oh, this one can be a devotee, but that one cannot be a devotee. Everyone can be. That's how he's impartial. But if someone does become his devotee, then that person becomes especially dear to him. But no one's exclusive, excluded. Even Hiranya Kasipu can become a devotee. So that's his impartiality. Everyone gets the chance. No one is excluded. Even a demon can transform into the world. But when they are devotees, then they are most dear to Krishna. So in this way, it's not a contradiction. Because everyone gets a chance. And not only once, again and again, you get the chance. Don't want to be a devotee today? Okay, get another chance tomorrow. Impartial. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, CDs, eh? Okay. All right, so if anyone is interested, we have CDs tonight, and uh, they're going fast. <laughs> That's uh, so. If you're interested, you can take one. Twenty each cash card. Okay, is it? Eh? Anyway, you give. If you're really poor. Whatever you can. Mr. Mango. <laughs> Mr. What? Mr. Cake. Mr. Cake, eh? Yeah? <laughs> It's all right to be Mr. Cake. <laughs> Better than Mr. Sour Grape, you know? <laughs> It'll be too up for that, to realize. He's getting ready. And this guy and that guy in wrestling. This guy, this guy and that guy in wrestling. Okay. Well, I know you don't like parlance, but I'll give you one anyway. That's good. You don't like it. You don't even like ice cream. You gotta keep it for a minute. So what to do? You all sit like as if more is coming, but I really have to go. <laughs> I got, I flew from Mumbai to Delhi, from Delhi to Melbourne, from Melbourne to Brisbane, and reached on Saturday at, in the middle of the day, and then in the early evening the program started. And then I had a full on weekend, 
and then it came to Melbourne, and now I'm sort of like a little bit tired. So, and tomorrow I'm giving Bhagavatam class, and initiations, and mentors, so, and I still have to think of a name. Where's the Bhagavatam class? <laughs> So, go home. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mom, yeah. If you have five minutes, can you do a little more kirtan? No, it's like a rabbi. It's cool. It's all given away to call to Swami. It's a the hair. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>